Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Christian Moore. Um, this is our exhibitor training 101 class. So I'm going to go over a portion of exhibitor training, which is interactive exhibitor listing. So I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about uh, what the presentation is going to be. Um, basically, I'm going to go over the IEL setup instructions. IEL is basically what we call interactive exhibitor listing. So it's just a, a short version of purpose. We use it quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to show you some examples of finished products so you can get an idea of what you want to strive for, what information you want to put in there. Um, so when you're building this, um, this IEL for yourself, you, um, you, you kind of have something to strive for. Also, I'm going to give you some tips on what to include. Um, the benefits of the IEL is the importance of why you need to set it up and make sure it's, it's a robust listing. And then at the end, I'll go over any questions or concerns that anybody might have. So this is the interactive exhibit listing. This is the setup form. Um, it's very simple and very basic. Uh, basically, you're just putting in your company information. Uh, you want to make sure you have contact information there as well because th these listings are up you know, about 60 days before the show. They're up 30 days after the show. So you want to make sure that you have all the contact information there. So when attendees are going to our website to get an idea of the different exhibitors that are going to be there, you want to make sure that you have your contact information there because they might want to contact you before the show, after the show, uh, whatever it might be. So you want to have all your contact information there. Um, you know, put your Facebook, your, your Twitter, all of those different things on there as well so they can uh, really get a good idea of what you, what you do, the products that you offer, and the services that you offer. If you have a logo, a hybrid version of your logo, make sure you include that as well. Uh, when I show the examples, you'll see why that's important. And, and, and if you don't have a logo, make sure you use some sort of an image that represents what your company is, what your product is, what your service, what your service is. Um, so you basically just fill out this form. It's, it's very self-explanatory. You submit it and, and, it'll, and it'll upload. We, on the back end, we go through and we kind of um, make sure everything's there. If there's something that's missing that we need, we'll contact you. And then also um, our admin, Eduardo Moreira, if you have any questions, you can contact him. He can walk you through it. Um, if you're having issues with the, you know, uploading images or pictures or anything like that, um, he can help you as well. Sometimes if, if all else fails, you can just send the information to him and then he can put it up there for you. So we want to make sure that we make it as easy as possible for you. Here are some examples of listings that are um, that, that have already been created. Uh, Sleep Number is one of our national sponsors. This is a, a listing that they have. It's got their contact information. And it's got a good description of, of what they offer. If you see at the bottom, it's got a contact number and it also has their, their web address. So if anybody wants to find out information from Fleet Number before the show, during the show, after the show, they've got all the different ways of, of uh, being able to contact Fleet Number. This next one's Bath Prep uh, Bathroom Solutions. Uh, this, is, this has got a nice image. I mean, from that image right there, you can tell exactly what they do. It's not their logo. Uh, but you can tell it's something that's bathroom product related. So it, it, it's a good way to describe the company in a, in a very quick and efficient manner. And then also they have a description there. Uh, if you notice there, they don't have contact information. So that's something that uh, they, it's got their address and it's got the, um, the booth number. But if you wanted to contact them before the show, it doesn't really give you a whole lot of information to be able to do that. So that's something that I wanted to, to point out to you guys to make sure, make sure you put that in. Here's two more examples that I wanted to share with you. Uh, Lake Mary Lebanon Exploring Center. They've got their logo. It, it, it's self-explanatory what they do. They've got their address, uh, and they've got the, the description of the different products and services that they offer. Again, this one doesn't have a, a contact number, uh, but they do have their Facebook, and they have a Better, Beer, uh, Better Business Bureau uh, logo up there. So that's, that's good information to put on there as well. But again, you want to have, uh, I, I keep going back to the contact information, whole purpose of this is for attendees to see who's going to be at the show, but then also this is a great way for them to contact you before the show and after the show. You'd be amazed how many phone calls we get after the show of people of attendees saying, hey, I wanted to talk to such and such company, but I lost their con I lost their card. I misplaced the bag that I had at the show. I can't contact them. Um, so this is what we always refer back to to give them that information. And that's that way they can track the, uh, the different exhibitors down and, and, and purchase their products. Next one here is Metalfish. 
That is kind of a mix of their 